Hello, my name is Pastor Mike. Welcome to Worship at St. Paul. Our theme for today in the midst of all of this is why? Why is God allowing this to happen? What is he going to accomplish? And how should we respond to him? As we seek answers to these questions, we will turn to the Bible and see what God has revealed to us about times like this. Our opening hymn for this morning is How Great Thou Art. Then I 
begin this worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, within a short amount of time you have taken away much of our distractions. In response to this, we come before you and ask why. As your people, through the power of your Holy Spirit, lead us to a partial understanding of your will for us during this time. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. The Apostle Paul writes, For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen. Within a matter of weeks, the Lord God has taken away a lot of our distractions. Millions of people around the world have been ordered to take shelter in place. Today, many adults cannot go to work, and children are not able to attend school. On top of that, most of our leisure activities are now gone. For the time being, we can't go out for dinner. We also can't see a movie at the theater. We can't invite many of our friends to come over for a get-together. And we can't cheer on our favorite team in the stands. Within a very short amount of time, God has most certainly changed our lives. And the truth of the matter is, sad to say, but many people are going to die. However, most people are going to make it through this pandemic okay. So here's a question. In the midst of all of this, has God gotten your attention? I hope so. Here's another question. Would you like to ask him why? Well then, stick around. Because in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look into the scriptures and 
see what God has revealed to us about times like this. As we begin to answer the question why, we'll have to go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. But soon after that, God's good creation decided to rebel against him. And once we disobeyed God as our punishment, he allowed the darkness of sin to enter into his perfect world. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all sinned. However, since God has compassion, on his fallen and sinful creation, he gave all of us an option to escape sin, death, and all of the powers of evil. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Through Jesus' sacrificial death on Good Friday, the wrath of God the Father has been directed toward his one and only Son. Yes, the sins of the entire world have been placed upon the shoulders of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, all of the things that we have done against God and all of the things that we have failed to do killed his son on the cross. In response to this, since Jesus obeyed his father's will perfectly, God accepted the sacrifice that he made for you and for me. And once all of our transgressions were buried with the son of God in the tomb, three days later, our Lord and Savior was resurrected from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. And whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. This is the good news. For those who believe and place their trust in what God has done for us all will be saved. Because the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses, brought justification. For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. And in response to the free gift of salvation that God has offered up to all people, many sadly have rejected him. Therefore, God gave them up because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creation rather than the creator. Now, let's fast forward to today. During this stay-at-home order, most of our leisure activities are now gone. For the time being, we can't go out for dinner. We also can't see a movie at the theater. We can't invite many of our friends to come on over for a get-together. 
and we can't cheer on our favorite sports team. In a matter of weeks, the Lord God has taken away a lot of our distractions. In the midst of this, has he gotten your attention? I hope so. So why is he allowing this to happen? Because many have turned away from him. Many have ignored him. Many have despised him. Many have failed to worship him. And now, he's giving us an opportunity to come back and receive what we all most desperately need. In the book of Acts, after the people realized that God was in the right and that they were in the wrong, they were cut to the heart and said, What shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for those who are far off. So, what's God going to accomplish in the midst of this pandemic? Well, many things. But most importantly, he's going to reach out to you and to many other people. And in the power of his word, through the gift of his Holy Spirit, God will lead many from death to eternal life. Remember, God has revealed to us in the Bible that Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. With that being said, how should you respond to God as he's reaching out to you today? Repent. Change. Turn to him. Acknowledge that he's in the right and that you've been in the wrong. And if you're sorry, then ask for his forgiveness. Receive his mercy and grace and you will be saved. So, is that it? End of the story? Happy ever after? Of course not. In fact, it's only the beginning. For the Lord God has declared, This promise is for you, and for your children, and for all who are far off. This good news has been delivered to you. God has given to you another chance. Now, who should you share this video message to? In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As the Lord God has reached out to you today, let us now respond to his promise and ask to be forgiven. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we thank you for reaching out to your creation and for redirecting us so that we can focus on what's truly important. Today we have studied your word and we thank you once again for extending to us the opportunity of experiencing an eternal life with you on account of your Son's sacrificial death and glorious resurrection. Help us now to share this message of salvation with others as it is according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God in heaven, It is in times like these when we are reminded that we are completely dependent upon you. Lord, we know that you are sovereign and that you remain in control of your entire creation. Help us to remain vigilant and wise during this time. Guide our government to lead us. Equip our health care system and our doctors to be prepared for the challenging days ahead and empower your church to be a beacon of hope and peace to all who are seeking you. If it is according to your will, spare our country, our community, and all of our loved ones from this sickness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we pray for all of the people who are celebrating birthdays this week. Today, we ask you to be with Bryce Randall and Posey Seabrand. Lord, continue to provide and protect them in this life with good health and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, we humbly ask you to provide healing to all who are in need. We specifically pray for Harvey Spurl, Carol Wells, Ed Wheelwright, Denny Meyerhofer, Luann Jordan, Darlene Steffes, Lou Paglin, Mary Ambrosia, Karen Steffes, and all who are in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is, O Christ, our true and only light. like to thank you for worshiping with us today at St. Paul in Elizabeth, Illinois. Uh, please uh, feel free to share this service with uh, those in your life whom you think would be blessed by this. May the Lord continue to bless us and keep us in his grace this week and forevermore. God's blessings.